Hello everyone, I am back from my long ass, well, non-uploading. Why was I gone for so long? Well, let's put it simply, I lost motivation, school kicked me in my arse, and then I had to take care of a dog. I was busy. I'm very sorry. I am non I'm not busy anymore. But on the brighter news, there is summer coming around, so you might be getting more uploads from me than usual from the past, you know, month, I or about more than, like, two months, if not more, of me not uploading. Now, well, you read the title correctly. This is What If Deku Was Betrayed, my first ever one for this, well, what if. But, you see Technoblade, right? Minecraft. You know, part of the Dream SMP. Well, this is not only Betrayed, but the reincarnation of Technoblade. And how this happened, well, Izuku was betrayed by, well, the League of Villains, well, when they were taking the information of, well, the, uh, how would I put this, the USJ, when it was instead of, instead of Shigaraki, it was Toga, I can, which I'll just state, she kind of joined a little early then, well, when they, when she joined in the canon version. And, well... On one of, well, Izuku's, well, when he was at the doctor one time, when he was, well, when the doc, you know what? Hmm, I have an idea for this. When, well, it, this does happen after the entry exam, right? Well, Izuku afterwards is being, you know, motherly mother, you know, best mother. Well, she was using it a little matter of way. What do I mean? Well, the doctor that, well, all for one's doctor, or the doctor that also did Izuku's, well, cork stuff. Yeah, it was that doctor. And he said, no, I have to take some blood to run some test. So that he does. Inko doesn't see anything wrong about this thing there, you know, just making sure, you know, her little seminar rule is okay. Right? Right. Now, this would have been about, hmm... One bag of blood he had to take. Which, well, Inko was somewhat curious of why, asking him why do you have so much blood. With him explaining the machine's old, or his machine's pretty old, and it can be finicky at times, so the blood may not always happen in the right way, so it's good to have a little extra. Lying, of course. And he would go leave for about 15 minutes, come back with some fake results, and explain that Zuko was in perfectly good health, which, well, was true. Because, well, Recovery Girl kind of made sure of that before her, seeing her quirk, but that's besides the point. And, well, let's put it simply, she, well, the doctor would give the blood to Ofron, which would then give it to Shigaraki, which then would give it to Toga. Which then knew that Toga would go out and get the information, acting like a Zuku. Which, well, let's just say it simply... She made sure every single camera saw her. And, well, Izuku was, well, brought into the UA. Now, every month they do a routine check on the cameras for the entirety of the time. So, yeah. So, they would, um, you know, proceed to, well... You know, everything happens the same with Izuku. He has one for all. You know, everything's going the same like canon. Just until after the, well, USJ. Because Nezu thinks, how do they know we would be there at that exact time and as well as All Might? Originally, he thinks there's a mole. But then Sai, you know, then really doesn't really think anything much of it mainly because, you know, he knew all the pro heroes there. He's, well, been side by you know, teaching students with them for years now. So... Yeah. And, well, he would then, you know, put it towards, well, maybe someone would infiltrate the bit, infiltrate campus, you know, that. And, you know, he would, you know, proceed to go over the file, well, go over the UA camera files that he had on, his had on his laptop. Why? He's the principal. I think he would have that. And, you know, he would proceed to look through it. It was, well, by, it took him about one week, so this would be the fourth week. But by the time of that, well, he already found Izuku, well, on the day before, well, on the day that, well, all those, 
well, camera people came in, well, Izuku made his move. Now, well, Nezu would, well, at least try to not suspect Izuku at first, thinking that it may be someone else, knowing that there are other people that have somewhat of a copy quirk, like Toga. But whenever he tried expecting as much as he did, he couldn't find anything. Why? Well, the vill with Toga, she not only did the, well, she didn't only just, well, make sure the camera saw her, she also put fake information on them. Basically, she would, they basically made an entire scene of random students, or well, the same, well, made a kind of like a, basically they did auto shop quickly well, with a very high tech person, with a, you know, person with a tech work, and basically erased Izuku from any cameras ever recorded in the lunchroom. So he would never be there. And anyone that was, well, talking to him so they don't look, you know, crazy, you know, talking to an invisible person, he would just, well, erase that. Or make it look like they're doing something else, like eating. Basically, just, you know, showing them eating. And, and Nezu, but afterwards, you know, Nezu would find this very suspicious. And, well, go off and tell several of the pro heroes that day, or, well, the next day. And, well, they really, you know, think this, mm, this isn't right, this isn't true. But Nezu explains that he's done his own research, which they fully trust Nezu, so, yeah. And Izuku would be brought, well, to Nezu's principal, principal office, where they all asking, why'd you do it? And not with, well, all my right behind him, saying, yes, young Midoriya, why did you, why are you a villain? With Izuku immediately going how he would. Wait, what? I'm not a villain. I, I want to be a hero. Oh my, you know that. I I trained hard, you know, on the 10th month, on those 10 months. I trained my butt off, or, yeah, my butt off. With all my saying, then how do you explain this? Bringing, well, the, well, with Nezu kind of flipping his laptop around and clicking the video. And it directly shows Izuku. Yeah, he's, it's basically showing what, well, Nezu saw. Izuku stealing the files on the USJ. With Nezu saying, seeing you have been, well, seeing we do, seeing, well, you have been in league with the League of Villains, which have most, basically have killed, and, well, almost killed your teacher, or your former teacher now, as well as other things, you will now be going to prison. Do you have anything to say to us before you go? Izuku's just staying, no, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, I promise, I promise, someone, you know, someone must have framed me, please, please, don't, 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 with, well, they would all betray Izuku at this point, with, with Aizawa saying, I would, how did you ever, how do I ever think you ever had potential, I should have expelled you on the f first day, all I'm saying, and I should, if I could, I would take my quirk back. And yet I can't. My master would be so displeased to me. Rest her soul. With, well, Nessa saying, it's okay, All Might, you didn't know. Plus, we can always make and give it to someone else. With, well... One second. I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry, my apologies. Um, basically, it, you know, Nezu would comfort All Might with Izuku saying, no, no, no. And then quickly police would pop in and, well, handcuff Izuku. Izuku actually showing no kind of, well, you know, he's uh, trying to explain, he's not attacking them, but he's, you know, he's trying to break free of the police officers, which then take that as a sign as him trying to attack every, you know, the teachers, and, well, proceed to beat on him. First, one grabs his baton, not going for his gun mainly because he knows this would, well, because these are good cops. You know, they're good cops. One go, for, both of them would go for the batons, you know, do the whole shink, you know, stretch it out, and, well, both would hit Izuku's legs. Both of his legs would be now fractured. With them now carrying him, well, out, by, on their shoulders, but one of the men would say that he has a taser to Izuku's right side, so he moves, or tries to escape. Well, he won't get through that far. So Izuku had, well, was brought to a police car, set off to the police, st police station, and then Inka would be told about this. 
she would immediately deny all charges and believe Izuku no matter what, including Miski and Bakugo, but, well, you know, they couldn't do anything mainly because, well, first off, none of them were lawyers, and second off, they had no proof. Because, well, they really had a, a no connection to the law, so it's not like they can just ask people, oh, hey, uh, you know, do you have any information about this stuff? And, and they would go, yeah, are you a lawyer? Uh, no, but it's for, get out, you're not a lawyer. Basically, if you're not a lawyer in that kind of matter, you're, yeah. Unless I was really public matter, yeah, no. And, well, this is a be sent off to prison. Supposedly to be gone for 20 long years. Now, well, that's supposedly, well, not. And, well, one day on the, well, when he's, hmm... On the day of the sports festival, yeah, that's a good day, he gets a dream, well, well he, let's, mm, no, on the day of the sports festival, Izuku breaks out, but, well, when he breaks out, well, no one knew how he did it, he had a quirk-canceling, well, necklace on, or, well, well, neck piece on, basically, it's what, well, Deadpool had when he was captured. You know, the meta collar. Yeah, collar. There we go. The, well, in this case, it's a quirk collar, but quirk canceling collar on his neck. How knew how to break out? He would immediately, well, when he left, knowing that there's most likely a tracker in there, he would break off the, well, you know, put his, you know, basically, bas what he did was basically kind of hacked at the thing enough where it can go, where the, well, when you kind of slap it on or click it on. Because you have to, like, how do I put this? Like, it's like when you open your mouth or when you open your hands and they close. And then you can, like, see that there's some sort of, like, a shape in there. It basically did that, and he does it the opposite way. So it opens enough, and then he just takes it off by hand. And he walks out. He would walk around, but, well, you know. Let's give the backstory on this. Because, well... In this, also I should explain, he does look like this, or well, he doesn't, he just has the, well, pink, long pink hair, white face with a scar on his nose that it's going across it. He doesn't have the boar head yet, and seeing he's, well, not, well, a pig, you know, a pig uh, man, or however you like to put it, I'm not trying to go into that kind of territory, because I know that can be related to racism, and I'm not all, you know, I don't like that, like much of you most likely don't, so I'm not going to go too much in that territory, but he wouldn't have the pig ears you see in this picture. And, yeah. He would have run off, and wearing a, well, obviously a cell suit, quickly going to a, well, fancy tailor shop, that, well, when he was running down the street, being very quick, having you know, speed, but, well, that's besides the point now. Um, yeah, I kind of rambled off, sorry. But, you know, back to Zuku. After Zuku was, well, captured and sent to prison for until the, U well, not the USJ, for the sports puzzle, on the th one, after the first week, everyone knew that Izuku was going to be a hero, and was supposed to be the successor of All Might, which somehow got in there, which, well, really shouldn't have, but people have their ways of getting information w in prison. And Izuku had been beaten every single day, not only by the prisoners, but by the corrupt prison guards. And the prison, well, prison guard officer, or the officer of the guards, well, he had a hobby with the prisoners. And what was that? Oh, it was simple. A battle to the death arena. And Izuku was forced into it, like many others. But Izuku, well, they had their quirks allowed in it. And Izuku took his first kill that day. And afterwards, he vomited. He didn't like the sight of a dead body he committed. He was disgusted of himself what he could have done something but over over time it was just over and over back to the pit back to the pit back to the pit over and over and over again until his kill count went to 50 now note this took all the way to the sports festival 
And Izuku, well, he was emotionless in those 50 kills. Because after that one kill, he closed himself off, not wanting to feel anymore. And, w and then, well, well, it waited. But, well, just changes of his hair would slowly turn after halfway through about 25 kills. And one night, he would get a dream on the, well, 40th kill. A man wearing a, well, lovely cape. A crown. Basically what Technoblade would wear in its royal, in his royalness. He would explain that he's paying tribute to the blood gods. And he has come, and I have you know, explained that he has come to offer help to show him more, well, more power he could obtain. With him saying, with Izuku saying, and what power would, may that be? And he would just state that it's called. What would be a good quirk called for that? Um, the Devil's Hand. His, the power would be called. Really, it's just Minecraft, but I have to give a cool name. And having Devil's Hand, well, basically, I think that would be suitable because you can basically, basically well, punch a tree in Minecraft and not feel any pain. You can use a sword that probably is heavier than a ton. Or, like, more tons than you can Im imagine. And, yeah. And he, and also, well, most likely for how much we use our characters in Minecraft, how built would they be? If you really think about it, if they had a build system in it, for how much stuff you broke and you played until the end, how built would they be? Like, Jesus Christ. But, anyways, you know. He would offer them power, and Izuku would take it. And he would say, alright, your training begins now. With Izuku, well, saying, alright. And train and train until he was about to go for his 51th kill. But that's when he made escape, because when they took the collar off, well, let's just say simply, his quirk was gone, and his, well, power that Technoblade gave him, Oh, 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 oh. It was just, well, weakened. Not even canceled. It was weakened. It was so great it couldn't be denied. Though he knew he couldn't break out with just the weakened state. So he waited until he waited until he had his full power back. And as soon as they did and left him in the ring, he laughed. And he didn't never have done that before. He would laugh and just say how gullible they are, and then proceed to fling his well, proceed to fling his hand back like he was about to throw something like a spear, <clears throat> and then a trident appears, and he throws it, hitting the man directly in the neck, pinning him to a wall by the neck with a spear jabbed through his heart, and he would die. The spear would come back flying. If you don't know, this is loyalty. And hit it when it went back in Zuku's hand. Zuku, well, basically, well, moves the sword in a quick fashion and takes all the blood off of it. In a single motion. And he would look at everyone and smile, immediately splashing two potions of strength and speed. Then grabbing, well, then quickly getting TNT, throwing it while igniting it, and the wall would go boom. And he would jump out. And then he would, well, what I just explained, be walking through the city, going and finding a tailor shop, and putting this on. And then finding a, well, a very, well, and proceeding to go off now. Once news hit the UA that a prisoner escaped, Izuku Midoriya. Well, <laughs> they were shitting in their pants because they thought he was going to get revenge. Which is somewhat true, but not quite. Izuku wanted to, well... Well, not to get revenge yet. He wanted to get answers of why he was framed. And the best source of that, as he knew, was the League of Villains. And taking his new, well, identity that night as well. He would have, 
well, becomed, well, as everyone on the streets would know him by, the Grim Reaper, or, well, he was a symbol of the Grim Reaper, you could state, but his true name was Technoblade, or Blade for short, or Techno, or Techno, you could say, whatever you like, whatever you guys like. But anyways, he was known as one thing and one thing alone, the Grim, well, could be known as, the, well, he had several names in that time, but he was mainly one as, as Technoblade. And he, well, he was finding information quick, not even giving two shits of if he tortured them or not. If they just gave the information up, he would be grateful and let them live. But if they kept the information and bited their tongue, they would be dragged to a corner of the earth that he, they could never escape from. I was tortured and tortured until they gave him the information. And then he would just kill them as a mercy for how much they endured. Because if they went back, they would no longer be sane. They would be insane, sent to a mental hospital for the rest of their, rest of their lives. So he killed them as a mercy. Still having, well, some goodness in him, even if it was, well, small, giving out simple mercies, plus blood for the blood gods, and after, well, 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 he got enough information, and he tracked down them to the bar, and he would knock, and the League of Villains knows, he, they know about this technology, they, well, been trying to keep as far away from as him as possible, and then when, well, Dobby opens the door and they see him, they freak out. With, well, Dobby merely trying to bust, well, fling him, well, his fire at him. Izuku blocking with a shield and explaining that he's not coming here to fight. He's come here to talk. With Shigaraki on guard asking what he wants. Him explaining that why, why did they, well, fray me. Why did you fray me? Made, made my friends betray me and made me into a killer. With Toka saying, oh, Deku! Deku-chan! With her going up trying to run at him with a knife, Izuku immediately bitch, well, backhand bitch slapping her, setting her into a wall, making her well, someone indent in her passing out, and stating that they did this. They did this to him. Why? And then, well, all for one hearing this on the speaker, because he always listens no matter what time it is. Mainly because he has an well, endurance quirk, which makes sense seeing how long he's been around. And he explained that he was merely a piece at first on the board. But he's grown to be something bigger now. And he would offer him a spot on the table. On the League of Villains table. Izuku thinks and his smiles, saying, all right, fine. Though I'm not loyal to anyone but myself, so if you die or if you're in trouble, don't rely on me to bring you back here. With him looking immediately at Korogiri, with Korogiri being calm through all this, because well, this one isn't, this wasn't his first rodeo. And asked if there was a room he could use. Korogiri stating a room, and he would go up with well, is it good going up to it? He would well. Sit there and then just, well, look at the room. It was bare and dirty, spider nest on the corner of the room. And what he did was simple. He basically made the entire room flood and then used a sponge to sponge it back up. And it was clean by then. Or any, well, spiders and gunk that was gone, there was, well, gone. And, yeah. And, well, ah, he would fix the room up, making it look nice, refurbishing things, and well, let's just say he had the nicest room right off the bat when anyone came. But whenever someone, whenever one, well, one person, well, looked into his room, they would just see him looking at the blade, which wouldn't be called the, the Orphan Slayer, or however he puts in the SMP. No. It would be called the, well, the, no, the Hero Slayer. Yeah, the hero slayer sword. 
or an even better, I actually, there's a better name for it, the Butcher Sword. And he, they would look at it. Whenever he looked up to see them, they saw Zuku. But when they looked at the old footage again and noticed how much, well, when, well, Toga wants to see the old Zuku again, knowing that this is no longer her, Deku, well, let's put it simply, yeah, she was shocked. The similar role, or the one that always smiled, was gone. The boy, the naive boy with the simple dream of just wanting to become a hero as best he could, was gone. And the man that wants revenge came. And he, well, was nothing was going to stop in his way. If he had to go through the city just to get to All Might or to his former friends, well, he would butcher them all. Even if he had to use a pickaxe, he would kill them. He would kill them all. <laughs> and one day, one on the night of, well, well, as we would know as the Stain Arc, everything changed. When Ida went out, he was the first to go. He was, well, ah, the first to die of the Class 1A, the first to die of UA. And then, one by one, lower the students lower by lower, because Ida was just an example that the storm was coming for them, and it was only going to grow. Oh, one by one. It was support course students, the regular students that just went, well, was just, well, being taught. The 1B students, and all the way until 1A and the teachers. And UA, it was no longer a school. It was a castle, you could say. They, well, barbered up the walls. They reinforced the walls. They made the glass bulletproof. Metal detectors everywhere. The thing was a basically, basically fortress. But I was only talking about UA, wasn't I? Oh, and the city got even worse. For the unwealthy, it was just hell. They had a fight to survive every single day. Like Azuku once had to. And well, <laughs> the middle, the well, medium wage people, well, they didn't have it as bad, but well, they were more worried about robbing at the night. Or getting more bank robbers would be happening now. And that, well, and the high end people, well, we you know, all know how high end people would take this as. They would just do what UA did barber up their houses. Fix their and make their house and soon almost literal fortress. Well, almost. Some of them aren't as well. Didn't have the most as well money as others that could have done more, but you you get the idea. And for one month, you a and all students and parents were there just to keep them safe. And the news would talk about this every day, that UA is only protecting its own. The parents of the students, as well as the students and teachers. With the teachers only going out at night to stop as many villains as they can. Because that's when it was the prime amount of villains. Like if you were to see a red sun out and all the zombies came out. A swarm of them. But instead of zombies, these were villains led by Izuku. And in that one month, well... Well, Shigaraki, he bought more than he could chew, and he was captured. And asked questions, but well, when they started asking questions, they heard a ding, 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 And then Shigaraki said to blow off. Sorry for the bad sound effects, but well, he would, his head would blow up, splattering everywhere. In a full 360 radius, blood would have been on the interrogators and the heroes in the room, and blood splattered across the one-sided window, across his, well, his own, Shigaraki's own body. Because, well, what caused that bomb? Well, well, 
he, with all for one, he knew Shigaraki was just a pawn in all this. Uh, well, just a pawn. So if you know the manga, you know the manga. So if he, he made a precautionary measure when Shigaraki was, well, one time drugged. He implanted a bomb in his, his head. And if he ever pulled a, well, a button, it will count down by five. And Shigaraki didn't know about this, so he's like, what's going on? So he was terrified when he died, even more so. And he, his head would blow up. Now was Zuku the only, well, real leader of the, well, League of Villains with, well, Korgiri now going to, well, Izuku for the leadership? And, well, all for one giving his quirk to Izuku? Oh, <laughs> it was so, so chaotic. The government in that situation was just destroyed. Police officers would die every day. It was chaos. Japan went from the, what was it? 5%? 2% was it? To an outstanding 80%. But the number was not done going. It might have slowed down, but it was still going up. Until the entire city was a fortress. And Izuku would be waiting and waiting and waiting until he got to 1A. Because there, well... That was the only place he couldn't get to. As much as he tried, as many villains as he sent out, none ever came back. They were all in an underground prison that they, that UA made for its own prisoners. But well, when Izuku heard about this, he smiled. And he knew that they are still up on their morals. They wouldn't kill. But they just sent. They have how many, you would think? Five thousand in there in their prison that could hold ten thousand and was it was a good dead he kissed well he smiled and just well did he well what he usually did until the prison was filled up to the brim surpassing its limits going to well two thousand people and then he struck like an iron hammer Hitting a piece of a stick, it would break. And like Yue, Izuku went out. Because before he was just, well, in the background, focusing his forces, leading them. But this, oh, he was leading the charge right at Yue. And Yue saw this. The entirety of Yue, well, teachers, including Nezu, as well as, well, the students themselves, you know, 1A, would prepare another, well... Let's just say, putting it simply, they're stronger, yes, because of what they just had to endure, but they're not strong enough to survive the mountain numbers, because once the battle commenced, Izuku, well, broke off with a several amount of the LOV, while the heroes were busy taking care of the bigger amount of villains. He went to the prison cells, and he unlocked them all, just, well, destroying all the cells and releasing everyone. And he will just state that they're all free, and it's time to take the city. And he would walk, while everyone ran af after him. And he would just, well, wait, and wait, and walk. Well, he would walk slowly. He would see the heroes beaten and bloody to a pulp, because he said he wants to see them when they die. And the villains, well, they had no problem with that. They were already getting enough at his, as this is. And, well, letting Izuku, well, put on a show for everyone? Oh, that was just putting frosting on the cake. They were, some of them were just making, well, getting popcorn for this. Because that's how excited they were. And what, well, Izuku did. One by, slowly, slowly, but surely. He would construct, well, the thing that you will have someone in when you want to cut their head off. I don't know what it's called, but, well, it has their both hands in it, so they can't really move, as well as their head. And the heads of the teachers would roll, with the last following was Aizawa crying, thinking in his mind, stating that they should have believed Izuku. 
Izuku was back then kind, but now he's just a murder machine. And Izuku would chop the head off of Aizawa's head. With everyone being more traumatized, and the body would be moved, with the blood still dripping off of Izuku's axe, with the others on it, of the pro heroes, like Midnight, Nezu, even All Might. And All Might tried to break free, but Izuku, well, he made sure he had a cork canceling collar on him. So he would not be All Might. He would be Toshinori, or Yagi Toshinori. And the world would even be seeing this. He made sure this was live on TV. He had people go out to other countries and set up a connection of internet. So when he put this live, no matter what you were watching, it would be on it. And they all try to stop the recording. Heroes would die, and Izuku saying, Another one down. Next. Chop. Another one down. Next. And then when he got to the students, the first one was to go, was Mineta. Him begging for his life, like he's saying, no, 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 no. Chop. The head rolled into the basket filled with others. The faces in there were, well, you could imagine they were terrified, scared, or just dead inside. And then one by one, the t t students would all die, including Bakugo. S but before he went, he would state that Izuku's going to have to live with this for the rest of his life. And Izuku says, oh, I know. I'm going to have to live with this for the rest of my life. But I won't hate what I've done. I will enjoy the memory of you all dying. And then he would chop Bakugo, the last person to ever he has called friend. Back when he was naive. And that. When he killed Bakugo. Was when he finally changed. He might have been a man with rage inside. But now. He was free to do whatever he wanted. Hindered by nothing more. He could do nothing. Because his past was dead. Everyone he used to know. Either died. And Inkomodoria. Well, she didn't die because, well, Izuku could never kill his mother because she believed him. But, even Miski died and Izuku, well, he thought he had to do it. Because she knew what Mis well, Mitsuki would just do, seeing how, well, we all know what Miski could do. She could most likely make a revolution or a rebellion, which she would not want. So anyone that posted the threat, he killed them. Or imprison them in his own personal cell. That well, was specifically made for their type of quirk and their quirk alone. Think of it like how Dream in the SMP world had a, well, you know, a vault particularly all to himself. So, yeah. He was made to hold Dream and every cell in there was just hold, was there to hold one. And when the chaos fled, he would go back to the bar. He would drink a, well, some whiskey that he's been fond of now, and drink it. With Corgiri saying, very good job. It is a very nice sight for all the heroes to be dead now. With Izuku saying, oh, I'm not done. Japan might be, well, destroyed. But, it's not over. And he, him even going to all for one, being alive, so yes. But, well, this day was the day he died properly. Because, well, the only thing I was keeping all for one alive was his quirks. After that, he gave it to Izuku. Well, his quirks went with it, surprisingly, or not. But, well, that's another story for another time. And, well, he proceeded to, well, pass away with Izuku just stating, Thank you for letting me get my vengeance to all for one. And all for one stating that he knew that he was the right choice to make. Even if he died, his, well, his dream of a world run by rulers would always come true. And he would die in peace with a gr wicked smile on his face. And Izuku would well bury him. 
in a field so no one could find the body of all for one. He would also, he would state that, well, he would also, well, put a sign there stating, here lies the most powerful villain of all, or once the most powerful villain in all of the world, in all the world, in all the world. R.I.P. All for one, or O.L. Well, you know. Hanazuku, after that day, he went, he destroyed the world, and when it was destroyed, and no, everyone just, well, was chaos, he took control. He took care of the villains that were trying to become the leaders of those countries, and he became the ruler of the world. And what he did, well, he didn't do it alone after that, well, almost halfway through. He had a queen also, but, well, what should she be known as? Hmm. Uh, what should her, what should? I can't do any heroes, so. Ah, yes. I know it. Let's just state it was Fiyumi Todoroki. If you don't know, that's Nervous daughter. And well, yeah, they would rule like an iron fist. Yes, well, Fiyumi was the queen, but Azuka was the king, and they had no equals to anyone else. And they even built their own castle, an actual real castle, not something, not like a evil thing of it's a modern day thing. No, they built a castle. And well, Izuku realizing that it's going to be harder for him to control the world and having to go to different world, different places around the world and it would take time. He thought, what if I did what, well, what if I recreated the past? And if you don't know, I'll explain something. Geography wise. In the past, well, the entirety of all continents were combined into one big island. All smooshed together, and it was all one. And Azuku did that. They would all be combined. And Azuku, in the middle of all the kingdoms, right? or right in the middle of all the countries that were put together, his castle would be there, and it would be one known as a beacon of hope, or a beacon of death. Because on the top of it, it taught people how to be actual good people, but below, it tortured the scum. The top was for the queen, and the bottom was for the king. So, yeah. Now, if you love my. If you want to see more one shots, I suggest you like and subscribe. And you will be getting more soon. But do. If you want to see something unique, please put it down in the comments. I would love to do more unique what ifs. Who knows? I might try to expand again and do more different what ifs like Bell or Tundro. Which may be my next one. Who. Uh, who knows, you're right.